come off that stage and he'd be he'd be exhausted and that he would be joyful but he, he lived a hell of a life in the 26 years he was with us he made our lives so different I'm going to end with something you're probably not going to want to hear so they finally caught the that sold him the drugs the drug. At 11.07 p.m. on September 4, 2018, hip-hop artist Mac Miller would text his dealer Cameron Pettit in an attempt to purchase various substances. Mac Miller, yo, Cameron Pettit, yo, what's up? Did you hear back about Adderall? Nope, couldn't find any. All good. You don't have any lean, do you? Perks? I got some 2 milligram Dilaudid, but that's about it. I could get some yellows and blues, though. Blues is in Perks? Yeah, 30 milligrams. Those are my favorite, man. When can you get them? Probably in an hour or two. They're 30 bucks each. Any chance I can get 10 of those? 10 bars and a ball? Yeah, for sure. I'll get back to you when I'm about to pick them up. For show. Sure. Could you actually drop them off at the studio? Yeah, where at? I'm at Conway. Let me send you the address. 655 North Street, Andrews Place. Okay. Is that far from you? Not too far. I can make it. Okay, word. Let me know when you're on the way. Okay, I will. What time you thinking? Probably 1 a.m. That's for the blues too? Could you come through with the other stuff earlier? Yeah, that's for all of it. I'm gonna pick them up right now. Actually, I can wait, lol. Beautiful. Okay, sweet. These text messages show Cameron Pettit agreeing to provide Mac Miller with 10 oxycodone pills, 10 Xanax pills, and some cocaine. This transaction was scheduled to take place at around 1 a.m. on September 5th, 2018 at the Conway Recording Studios located at 655 North Street, Andrews Place. At 12.56 a.m., just four minutes before the scheduled exchange, Mac Miller would once again send a message to Cameron Pettit saying, Yo, yo. Eight minutes later at 1.04 a.m., Mac Miller would send Cameron Pettit another text message asking, Where you at? Mac Miller would then follow up with a third text message containing a single question mark. After waiting around for another eight minutes and still no reply from Cameron, Mac Miller would begin to text message Mia Johansson, the woman who introduced Mac to Cameron. Mac Miller, Cam is supposed to be pulling up, but he's not answering. Mia Johansson, I don't know, hun. Is there anybody else with the stuff? I can send some with a girl, lol. I need a few things. I have everything, lol. Snow bars and blue perks? I have it all. Do you have lean, too? No lean, lol, but I have Adderall and Oxy. Perks? I have Norco. What milligram are the Oxy and Norco? The Oxys are 30 milligrams and the Norco is 10 milligrams. So the Oxys are little? Yes, it's a little blue pill. Can I get five of those, five bars and a gram of snow? Yes, the 30 milligram Oxy is $30 each, the bars are $5 each, the 10 milligram Norco is $10 each, and I'll give you the gram for free if you book a girl. What about two grams? Deal, lol. What girls are available? Carla's ready. So what will my total be? Send me a picture of the Oxy too. How long would all this take to arrive? 30 minutes. I'm at 655 St. Andrews. With the girl, lol? What's the total of everything else? $1,025. Send through. South or North St. Andrews? North. Carla is 31 minutes away. These text messages between the two show Mia Johansson agreeing to provide Mac Miller with 5 oxycodone pills, 5 Xanax bars, 10 Adderall pills, 5 hydrocodone pills, and 2 grams of cocaine. The total of all this would come out to $1,025 and was going to be delivered to Mac Miller by a woman named Carla Amador, a prostitute who also goes under the name Carolina Cortez in the adult entertainment industry. 15 minutes after Mac Miller finished talking to Mia Johansson, Camera Pettit would proceed to text Mac Miller saying, Sorry, I got sidetracked. Coming now. Mac Miller would quickly reply back saying, For show. Then at 2.25 a.m., Cameron Pettit would arrive at Conway Recording Studios and allegedly give Mac Miller the substances discussed in their earlier text messages. Shortly after, Carla Amador would also allegedly arrive at Conway Recording Studios with the substances Mac Miller inquired about in his text messages with Mia Johansson. Moments later, Mia Johansson would text message Mac Miller asking what payment method he is going to use to pay for her products and services. 
How are you going to send the money? Cash app or Venmo? Are you going to send it tonight or tomorrow? Mac Miller. I'll handle it tomorrow. Okay, do you want to extend your time with Carla for an hour? Yes, please. Okay, cool. We'll just handle the money tomorrow. Mac Miller and Carla Amador would then proceed to spend the rest of the night together. The next morning, Mio Johansson would once again text message Mac Miller further explaining the new cost for Carla Amador's services as well as clarifying the prices for the substances provided. Mac Miller would respond shortly after explaining that he only meant to have Carla Amador's services for an extra hour but got sidetracked. Two days later, on September 7, 2018, Mac Miller's personal assistant, Sam Motivassel, would be doing his daily checkup on Mac Miller at his San Fernando Valley, California home, only to find Mac Miller unresponsive in a praying position on his bed at around 11.30 a.m. that morning. Sam Motivassel would then quickly begin to call 911, who ultimately instructed Sam to move Mac Miller's body to the floor and perform CPR. Mac Miller was sadly pronounced dead 16 minutes after the call. Immediately after Mac Miller's sudden death, detectives began investigating the crime scene where they ended up finding a plastic bag in a coat pocket in Mac Miller's bathroom. Inside the plastic bag were all but five of the pills he purchased from both Cameron Pettit and Mia Johansson. These pills would soon be brought in for testing where it would be revealed that all of the substances provided by Mia Johansson and Carla Amador were real and authentic while Cameron Pettit's oxycodone would test positive for fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid that is 50 times more potent than heroin. Out of the five pills Mac Miller consumed, four were the counterfeit oxycodone pills that Cameron Pettit allegedly supplied. This would later be confirmed after post-mortem toxicology results would show that Mac Miller died from mixed drug toxicity involving fentanyl, cocaine, and ethanol. The news about Mac Miller's death would soon begin to spread all over the internet with multiple media outlets reporting the story. Shortly after the news broke, Cameron Pettit would begin to direct message an individual the feds nicknamed PR on Instagram. Cameron Pettit, hi. PR, you good? I'm not great. Talk to me. Most likely, I will die in jail. I've been worried about you all day, don't say that. Yeah, dang it. What do you mean? You're just paranoid. Nothing has happened yet, but it might and I'm nervous. Yeah, don't think negatively, okay? Try not to stress. I feel like it's going to be okay, it's not your fault. I'm gonna get off the grid, move to another country. What should my name be? Are you really? Like, do you honestly think it's that serious? Your name should be Sweet Baby Dang Daddy. Let's move to Stockholm. Yeah, okay, maybe. I don't know yet. I will probably know tomorrow. Can you please keep me posted? I'm worried about you. Yeah. Cameron Pettit would then go on to direct message another individual on Instagram with this person being nicknamed AG, asking whether or not he should post a text conversation he had with Mac Miller on his Instagram account. Cameron Pettit would end up answering that question himself by stating, I think I should probably not post anything, just to be smart. Over the next year, detectives would continue to investigate the death of Mac Miller and would begin to assume that Cameron Pettit purchased the counterfeit oxycodone pills that Mac Miller consumed from Stephen Walter, a 46-year-old man from Westwood who has had previous run-ins with the law that resulted in convictions for charges such as possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine, possession of cocaine base for sale, and unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. These pills would then allegedly be delivered to Cameron Pettit by a 36-year-old man named Ryan Rivas, a man who authorities claim was a resident of West Los Angeles, California, but quickly relocated to Lake Havasu, Arizona following the death of Mac Miller. It was also revealed that one month after the death of Mac Miller, Cameron Pettit requested to purchase more oxycodone pills from Stephen Walter, which Walter would agree to provide. In addition to that, it was also alleged that Ryan Rivas was involved in more drug trafficking activities in June. These claims are backed up by a text message sent by Ryan Rebus to an unknown individual while negotiating a drug deal. The text message states, People have been dying from fake blues left and right. You better believe law enforcement is using informants and undercover police officers to buy them on the street so they can start putting people in prison for life for selling fake pills. This would allegedly indicate that all three of these individuals would continue to sell a dangerous substance even after the death of Mac Miller, while also being fully aware of the risks their products could bring to potential customers. Then, on September 4, 2019, exactly one year after the night he agreed to supply Mac Miller with oxycodone, Cameron Pettit was arrested on federal charges regarding the distribution of narcotics. Nineteen days later, Stephen Walter was arrested on similar charges alleging the conspiracy to distribute narcotics. 
Three days after Stephen Walter's arrest, the DEA raided Ryan Rivas' home in Lake Havasu, Arizona, where they would uncover prescription pills, guns, and ammunition. Ryan Rivas would also be brought into custody with similar charges shortly after. Cameron Pettit, Stephen Walter, and Ryan Rivas are due in court for trial on November 16, 2021. All three men are facing potential life sentences.